My name is Monica. I'm a teacher and project manager at Turing School. And Turing School, simply saying, is coding, not only coding, but IT related school, providing education and non formal activities for young people and children. We are working with people aged from seven to, to 30. And we provide many different activities, starting from extracurriculum activities, clubs, after school clubs, and public events and projects inviting people to understand, to, to make a relationship with IIT. The main reason why coding is important to young people, I think, is that it uh, enables them to express themselves, whether they are an artist or writers or sportsmen or any other. And coding is just like a tool who lets you to uh, create your website, your blog, or an e-shop, or whatever it is. And you know how it's saying, if you are not on internet, you are not existing. So if you have something on your, on, on your mind, if you're crafting and or taking pictures, doing photography, you have to, or like it's really beneficial to express yourself through coding, through being online. The activities that we offer at our school for young people to learn coding consist of extracurriculum activities, for example, introduction to computer science, introduction to artificial intelligence or game development or web development. And students come to our classes and they, they learn it. So it's a constantly ongoing activity throughout the, throughout the year. And other activities that we also offer are open events, for example, hackathons. And they are, they are super beneficial and interesting because it's easy to organize. You don't really have to have many resources, but more like think of a good theme, like a problem which young people may solve. Then you gather those young people in teams and from one to three days, usually they try to solve it using teamwork, using coding, using design skills, and then maybe the help of mentors. And if other organizations want to offer the opportunity to create the opportunity for young people to learn coding, I would say that there is no need to have professional teachers, which are expensive and sometimes hard to find, but not more like uh, creating the space for, for people to, run, to learn from each other using online tools, because there are so many, so many um, online sources to get the content. For example, in Coursera, in edX.org, Udemy, or what we are using in Turing School is uh, CS50. It's Harvard's course, Introduction to Computer Science, which is really well designed, really well structured, and provides many good, uh, many good sources. And it's online, so you have the content. But what students really need is the support and the space where they can dream and, and think about where they can apply their knowledge because coding skills just for coding is not important but coding skills for for solving problems for expressing themselves that's what important so yeah youth workers might just create a space might learn together for example taking the course or be a bit ahead youth worker can be a leader in that learning process the way we support young people in learning to code is by making small groups of learners so they can uh, get the attention from each other and from the facilitator as it, it's needed. We also have this self-paced learning philosophy that there are no uh, specific deadlines for every student, but, but rather they can learn at the, at the pace that they want, they need. Maybe some, somebody is slower, maybe somebody is learning very fast, so uh, they don't have to adapt to each other, but it really makes uh, them stronger as a group also because the ones who are studying a bit faster, they can help the ones who are a bit slower in that process. We also have the 20, 20 minute rule, which is uh, simply saying if you face a problem while learning, for example, you find a bug or, or if you want to find a bug where is an error in, in programming, you have to try to search for information for yourself for 20 minutes, maybe on the internet, maybe on that course which you're learning on. And if you are unsuccessful, you approach your peer and then you try to solve the problem together for 20 minutes. 
And in most cases, you are successful, you find the solution. But if not, after those 20 minutes, you approach a teacher and then you try to find a solution together. What, what also really supports the student is the constant reflections. So we give time for students to stop and to really think about what they are learning, how they are feeling about that, where they can apply. What is special or I would say unique in our way of providing the opportunities to learn to code is creating that friendship with, with learners and within our community. There is almost no separation between like teacher and, and, and students. We have more, we, we'd rather say that we are like learning group and we just have the facilitator and learners. And we are, we are making those friendships. We are not only talking about coding stuff during the classes. The way we create friendships with our learners within our community is also special. We are talking the same language. We're using Discord as a platform, which is very popular among gamers. They use it. So we also are in, in, in Discord and chatting about, about live stuff, sending memes. This is what important for young people. This is what important for us. And this makes the connection between us. All of our activities are practice first. Students try some tools, try coding, try write, or writing some kind of some code lines. They explore it by themselves. And then they get the problem, which is we try to make it very real world problem or relevant to them, to the learners, and they try to solve it. While trying to solve it, they find the theory and they, they find those that knowledge which is needed for solving the problem. And the last thing I would say is the way that we try to inspire young people and show the examples where they can apply their knowledge, how they can express themselves. We reach out to young people to get involved in our activities through social media, through personal invitations, uh, through repetitive invitations for people who already tried some activities before. And we also try to make it in a bit different way sometimes, if it's possible. For example, we, uh, last year we had that al alternate reality game, which was open uh, to everyone in Vilna city. And people saw our puzzles in the city and they had to solve a pro uh, the first puzzle, go to the website. On the website, they had another puzzle. That puzzle directed to the to the phone call. Then they, uh, then they made a phone call. They had to do other steps. And finally, they had to come to our school where, where the, last, the last step, the, the last puzzle and the random teams were made and they had fun during, during solving the puzzles. In our activities, we always track individual progress. Uh, of learners. And uh, in our way, it's pretty easy to do that because uh, students students always show the result uh, of the of the learning, whether it's a program or a, a game or anything else. And if there is no result, if person is stuck or we know who to approach and and then try to talk and, find what is the reason behind that, whether uh, he or she is not interested, maybe not motivated, maybe the program, the task is too difficult, or there are some personal problems at home, many different reasons. So we try to uh, identify if there is no result, uh, no progress, and then try to identify what are the reasons behind that. For other organizations which also would like to offer the opportunity for young people to learn coding, I would recommend using online sources and tools, as mentioned before, Coursera, Dix, uh, Udemy, or also Minecraft Education Edition, which is super fun for young people. They love playing Minecraft. Using these tools, it's important to inspire what they can do with that, with learning, to show the examples of the solved problems or startups or businesses, which were started by young people as well. In our courses, for example, one girl created a sword though application. It means that 
person can find the instructions how to make bread at their home because she, she knew how to do that and she created a website for others. Also, there are so many events ongoing in your city, in your uh, country or online and wherever in the world and young people can participate. And I think it's really important to encourage them to participate in there because they also gain not only coding skills, but uh, they gain network, they get opportunities to, to talk to mentors, to describe their ideas and make it more realistic, for example. And the last thing I would say is to create the community, the space where young people can discuss, can share their ideas, share their struggles, help each other. If there is no uh, possibility to create a community in your surrounding, if you have only uh, one young person uh, who is interested in IT and really wants to have the community, there are communities online. Search in Discord channels, go to Reddit, make sure that the person has other people to be together and learn together. Mm -hmm.